Okay, here you are at the entrance to the Grotto of the Oracle. Enter the Grotto of the Oracle. Its prophetic voice is here and given. Receive its message through Oracle readings and feel its presence in the beat of your heart. And like the other shows that I have curated, Myth, Magic, Mystery, uh, which assembled itself in a, a rather um, coincidental way to demonstrate the ultimate mystery of all, which is incarnating into a body and being born onto the earth. Uh, this show also assembled, the, the art assembled itself into a fashion that led you, led the viewer on a journey uh, into the Grotto of the Oracle. So it starts out with this painting, Deep Place, by Joel Jones. And this is like an entrance to a cave, but it's a cave not of darkness, but a cave of light that you're entering into. You're entering into the mystery of illumination. And as you continue on, as Joel was working, she was working on crossing that liminal threshold and moving into a, a different, an invisible realm. And this painting, Calistoga II, is after you've gotten to the other side. Calistoga I, sorry, uh, is also called the other side, because once you get to the other side of the liminal threshold and you look back, you see the darkness and the dirt that is where we come from and all this lightness of this other realm that we enter into. But in addition to the possibilities of illumination, as you cross that threshold, it can also bring, bring up from the unconscious areas of the mind um, uh, fears and, and nightmarish uh, visions and uh, imaginings. And so we have here Chris Castle's Megalith Angel to help to bring in that angelic presence that can help and guard, be a guardian for us as we enter into those deeper realms, some of which can be uh, somewhat frightening, uh, especially as we get to William Stoneham's painting, the direct result of tickling the dreamer's foot. Um, there's a dream going on here, but the dream has uh, definitely some disturbing uh, qualities to it. So it's a good idea when entering into these unformed and unconscious realms, subliminal as it were, uh, to uh, be in a meditative state which this painting embodies, called Crossing. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think then we come to Doreen Coyne's okay. right, alchemy right. series here. And as you can see, a lot of these headless figures, uh, obviously there's a wrestling going on with, with deeper and, and uh, more powerful uh, aspects of the psyche. <clears throat> Coming to, of course, the painting of Bill Stoneham again. Stigmata, which is almost the, the, the internal state of being um, scarred and stitched together, um, that we often find the dissolving of identity that seems wholesome and outwardly oriented as we go internally. And then we see here Sarah Thiesman's The Inner Voice, the veiling that, that we feel that there is a veil often that, that obscures the uh, ability to uh, understand the prophetic or um, guidance that comes from our inner voice. And here the, that is represented, that guidance is represented by the bird, uh, which is 
managing to sort of part the veil and convey uh, the message. As we continue on, that message takes a form with Joel Jones painting the true stone. Uh, I know that this was a deep search that she was entering into to uh, represent uh, a deep yearning that she had for truth and for understanding. So as you enter into the Grotto of the Oracle, it's not a dark and gloomy place. It's actually very light-filled, uh, but it does have protections coming in. This painting by Chris Castle, New Grange 4, is an actual representation of a megalith in Ireland uh, that he painted. Um, and the symbols on it uh, are representative of the symbols on the megalith um, at a particular location in Ireland. As we move on to understand uh, Chris's approach to the uh, oracle, uh, we have here very much the Native um, American influence. Uh, San Ildefonso, uh, the Pueblo there, and the ghost dancer that appeared, the snake and the um, petroglyph markings on the painting all evoke the uh, Native American tradition of exploring the inner realms, uh, the mystical realms, and um, having that kind of vision. And this is from my deck of sacred cards, which also did not happen to me uh, by intellectual planning. I actually did the paintings, I did the paintings to represent my experience of uh, higher states of energy and consciousness. And they assembled themselves, they told me, oh, we're going to be a deck of cards, and I didn't quite believe it, and it took me over five years. And it was partly the back and forth between Bill Stoneham, and, as he was talking about his assembling his deck of the avatar, that I was given the impetus and the inspiration to assemble my own deck of the Twelve Sacred Doors. The painting behind me, which is Quetzalcoatl, was a very important step for me because it documented an experience I had of an entity or being that I experienced in the mountains of Taos, New Mexico. I didn't intend to paint it. I was painting instead uh, a, um, another um, idea that I had in mind, uh, but before it was even completed, other people looked at it and said, oh, this is a very strange being. And uh, I knew instantly that it was uh, Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent. And lastly, my painting, the oracle, was not intended to be the oracle. I intended to paint something else, a very long painting that would have hung from the very top of the gallery all the way down the wall. I didn't have time to finish that, and so I wasn't sure what it was until it was done, and then it told me that it was actually my version of the oracle. And it has, over in this side, that confirms this, the inner ear on the left side, that's the ear that is hearing from inner or higher states of consciousness. And it's very large, so it's very open to other alternate states of consciousness. And then the voice has to speak through and we have to listen if we know what's good for us. And coming into this corner is Doreen Coyne's painting, another of one of her alchemical series. And what I love about this painting is the hand reaching out across that barrier, which is indeterminate. And many times 
when we really touch into the inner world, it can be an experience that is quite physical and quite detectable. It's not all just in the head. And so the actual hand and the touching into that which does not seem to be visible or real is, I think, a very significant painting or a depiction of the crossing that liminal um, threshold and entering into the unseen worlds. And we come to here where the deck of the 12 sacred doors is laid out. <clears throat> and this is um, my, the counterpart, the two decks of both of us are laid out here um, with the different meanings. And lastly, here in the corner is the Celtic altar itself, the megaliths that we, the three of us as curators, put together. We were inspired, it was pouring rain, we were working outside, and nevertheless, we had a great time uh, depicting how, what it would feel like if we entered through those stones and if the voice of the oracle came forth from the stones itself. And so when we had the poetry readings, we brought uh, the poet Cheja right here. Uh, this is his piece, Oracle Speaks. And nestled into the heart of the tree is the book of the poems about the Oracle. Very beautiful, profound poems. Thank you. 